I'm going to give you guys a forehand technique that can be used in a way that you can hit any ball from anywhere that will help your game from the middle of the court to the front of the court to the back of the court. And this technique is used by a lot of top players and it's a, a really nice, nice way to be able to really control the ball in a way that you can understand how you can control your racket face in order to control the ball. So when I mean using your racket face in order to control the ball, we're not going to rely on so much timing to hit the ball. So we're not going to swing in a semi-circle. We're not going to come around from the side of the ball and come around, which you see a lot of amateur players doing, a lot of beginner players are swinging in a big semi-circle, which you're really just relying on timing to get the ball to where you want, it to, where you want the ball to go. So. If you've been playing squash for a little while, you might have heard of people pushing or pressing the ball. And pushing the ball is a really good way to gain a lot more control, whereas you're actually controlling the racket face from behind the ball and pushing your racket face through the ball and where you want the ball to go. So we can use this pushing type technique in a swing in a way that we can control the ball more so that we can focus more on getting good length and getting the ball tighter into those back corners. So on the forehand, we're going to start off with, so you should always start off with your footwork. So your feet have to be in the right position to begin with. So footwork affects technique, because if you don't get your feet in the right place and you're not anticipating where the ball's coming to and you don't put those feet in the right place, then you're not going to, you're not going to be able to hit the ball in the way that you want. You're always going to be using a very different technique if you're too far back off the ball or too far forward or too far away or too close. So check out the uh, video on how footwork affects your technique. So once you've got your feet right, then we're gonna, then we need to get into the right position to begin with. So, and that's getting our racket preparation right. So racket preparation, try and think of throwing a ball. So when you start off throwing a ball, and so if I was going to throw a ball at the camera, I'd turn my shoulder towards the camera, get my hand in nice and close to my, to my neck, and then I would throw a ball straight down the camera. Right, so we're going to think the same thing when we're going to hit the ball, but instead of throwing it at the camera, we're going to throw our hand behind the ball. So we're going to throw our hand, or that we're going to throw the racket face behind the ball in the direction that we want to push it. So when we throw our hand down, we're going to do the same technique as throwing a ball. So we're going to point our shoulder down where we want to throw our hand to, and then throw the hand straight down so our arm is straight up and down. And when I mean straight up and down, I mean like vertical, like a, like a pendulum. And, and this pendulum thing here with your arm means that when your arm gets to the bottom, it's going to come through straight and it's going to push the ball straight, and it's not going to come around the ball. Remember, we're trying to push the ball. We're not relying on timing and coming around. We don't want to flick the ball or move our wrist. So when that arm is straight, and it's straight up and down, I'll turn around for you this way, this shoulder has to be in front of this knee in order for this to work. So you kind of have to push your bum back and lean over. If you see the angle of my body, there's quite a big angle over here, and I've got a lot of weight on this front foot, so that this arm can push through the ball. So when I throw my hand down to that point behind the ball, throw it down so your arm is straight, and then this creates racket speed, and racket speed is what hits, is what hits the ball hard. There's no, it doesn't matter how big and strong you are, it's just all technique. If you can throw a ball really hard, you can, hit the, you can hit a squash ball really hard. So when you've created that racket speed by creating, throwing that racket down behind the ball, think about this part of the racket here going straight down. So that part of the racket goes straight down behind the ball, that arm is nice and straight, and then from there, you're just gonna carry the momentum through and push your hand through nice and straight so that when that hand goes through, you're going to push the racket face towards where you want the ball to go. Make sure that when you push that racket face through that you're not looking up at where you're hitting the ball because what that does is if I look up and look at where I'm hitting the ball like this and I don't move my racket, well, I will move my racket, but not my arm, 
my racket face comes up when I look up. So sometimes I see a lot of people hitting the ball and they've looked up before they've actually hit it or just as they're hitting the ball. And if, they, if they've got that timing just wrong, they actually pull the ball back towards themselves. So make sure you're staying with the shot. So keep your head down just a little bit longer and push that arm through. And then if you want, you can point the end of the racket at where you want the ball to go. This is the same technique as what Jahangir Khan would have taught. I mean, you can look up his, uh, he's got some books out there, and exact same technique, but he would say you'd bring your arm up at the end so that your, your racket is ready for the next shot. But to begin with, just keep that arm going through, point the racket, and then bring it up so that you're not, because sometimes you'll quite often see people come through and they're pulling their arm up as they're coming through the shot, which means they're gonna get a variation in the height of the front wall. So look for those key points, that shoulder pointing down, and like you're throwing a ball, you're gonna throw that hand down, and then make sure your arm is straight, and keep your arm down as you're pushing through the ball, and drop, that, drop your shoulder in the socket, push through, make sure this shoulder is in front of that knee, and then point the end of the racket. So once you've got that technique pretty much mastered, use, use some video, watch your video of yourself hitting the ball, um, check out some videos of some other play, like top players and, and have a look at their technique and, and make sure you're looking for the technique that they're using when they're hitting the ball down the wall and they're using a nice precise short swing where they get behind the ball and push. Don't look at the swings where top players like Ramia Shaw or someone like that are, are flicking the ball and they're, and they're hiding the ball and being deceptive and they're, and they're swinging in a semicircle and they're cross-courting from weird positions and stuff like that. Try not to look at those techniques. Look at the techniques where they're using a basic swing. You need to master the basic swing before you can rely on those those flicking techniques and stuff. I mean, you need a, an enormous amount of coordination and timing and a lot of practice of doing solos, of hitting the ball back to yourself to get that wrist flick and all that kind of stuff. But basics first, so make sure you're using this, this simple, simple technique to gain more control of the ball. Once you've, once you've got that technique, then you can also try and shorten your swing up by starting from here as opposed to here. And you can even see a lot of players like uh, Cameron Pilly, he'll start his swing from here. And a, a lot of the Egyptian players are doing it as well, where they start from here and they drop the racket head. So you drop the racket head to create a bit of racket speed, straighten out your arm and then push through. And you can use this technique on drops, drives, lobs, and it's very deceptive because it looks like you're gonna play short and then you can flick from there as well. So have a go with that one.